Good morning, YouTubers, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We are back at it. As you can see, we got this nicely pre-shaped piece of walnut. Go around the front bow, here's the keel. And the instructions are showing me <clears throat> to leave this <clears throat> spot open like we got in the front for the bow spirit and the keel. So I'm starting to cut back on the pieces instead of making them dead end into here because <clears throat> obviously boards from the other side are going to come into there um, we're going to make them taper away from this keel line that's where the rudder is going to go So we got glue on about two thirds of this run here. And I'm sinking this into the glue for the first time. Trying to get a spot ready to drill here. Do one here to hold it. And this is the second board this morning. Since the last time we were filming. put a nail here it needs to be back away from the center line of that keel because we're going to be cutting that out put the keel and the rudder bar beam in there I think that's far enough away we'll find out been getting the, the whole board wet and then sort of placing it on the ship figuring out where it needs to bend at After I figure that out, then I put it in the little bender thing to heat it up and bend it. And I do one spot at a time. Where my tweezers go here. So I'll put it, heat to it here, bend this, then I'll come up, place it on there again, say, so, oh, it's okay until I get up to here. Then I put a little bend in it right there, because this is where it kicks five or 10 degrees. So I'm just gonna hold down, it's pushing that, board up against the other one I'll try not to drill too deep but deep enough I know I'm all the way through the plank
see that glue mushing out there. Board's a little high in that spot, so I'm going to put a clamp on it here in a minute. After we get two more. Pins in here. Take one of our clamps here. See if we can get in here. The board is sticking up a little bit above that one right there. And take these little rubber feet off. Hmm. Ain't getting in there with that. fingers are too fat to grab that thing. So Almost need a 90 degree clamp. Hmm. These are a little bit too big. Hmm. Yeah, that ain't gonna work either. So. We are going to have to figure out and we put a big clamp on it all the way across the... Okay, let's go ahead while the glue's still wet here. Get some more pins in. Up my wooden table project for my wife. That was a an old sewing table. That we redid the drawers on and put regular cabinet slides in the on the drawers. So and we added a drawer in the middle that wasn't a drawer before. beefed up the frame a little bit and then I <clears throat> cut a piece a two foot by four foot 
three quarter inch plywood, it's birch plywood, which is sort of sanded finish on both sides. And uh, screwed that from the underside to it to make a, a big work surface top. And then she said she wanted it in her shed so she can finish painting it and all. I guess she felt guilty or something, I don't know. But I've been, I hadn't worked on the ship all week because I was doing other stuff. Now we moved all the poinsettias and palmeras out of the greenhouse. I don't think we're going to get any more freezes this year. Florida gets freezes every now and then. When they do, strawberries aren't too bad off, but the as they put the water, <clears throat> they turn the waters on. So the freeze doesn't affect the strawberries, but in the orange groves, <clears throat> they got a little kerosene fire pot furnaces they fire up every other row. I think it's like every other tree or every three trees. I gotta put some glue on here now. And they'll, uh, they'll heat the grove up with pop, kerosene pot furnaces, hundreds of them. But in the last 20 years, the citrus industry has really suffered because of the canker and the greening, which is a disease that the orange trees get on the leaves or whatever. And another problem is a lot of orange groves were 30, 40 years old, and that's the lifespan of the tree itself. So if the grove owner didn't replant new trees, he was pretty much done. A lot of the grove owners are old, so they had to retire and sold their property off. I need to get a little bit of glue in here my stick so in the last 20 years I've seen a lot of orange groves got uh, tore out and they build brand new housing subdivisions Hundreds and thousands of homes have been built in places where there used to be grove. Just here in the county that I live in. There's still a few groves around, but there's not near as everywhere you used to go before it was all groves everywhere. There ain't near as many as there used to be now. Well, let me flip your camera around here. front and that's where we're coming in out here try not to bump you with my leg but it's a sad development in our area well I guess you could it's sad for the groves in the citrus industry but not sad for the people that want to move to Florida because there's lots of new 
housing developments everywhere. Watching some videos on YouTube about mutiny on the bounty. Of course, this is the bounty that we're building here today. And how Fletcher Christian mutinied against Captain Bly. Captain Bly was not a very good people person. They said he was an excellent navigator. commander but he did not know how to interact with people some might have called him a butthead but any good management guy knows if you're leading people or trying to get people to do things Can't be a jerk and expect them to be loyal to you. And that's one of the reasons that Fletcher Christian and a bunch of the other sailors mutinied this on the ship and kicked him off. I think Fletcher Christian and all his guys sail a thousand miles or more to pick an island and after they got there thought I drilled a hole enough after they got there they burned the ship after they took all the stuff off they wanted that way nobody could find them Captain Bly and his loyalists in a little teeny boat. I think it had a sail, but it was a little boat and there was probably 15 or 20 of them in there, people. I'm sure all of them didn't make it, but Captain Bly made it all the way back to another island. I can't remember the name of it. But it was like 3,000 miles. He sailed that little boat. And then they, once Captain Bly got back to England, he sent out a posse or the, the Royal Navy sent out a posse. And that ship sunk on the Great Barrier Reef. They never did find Fletcher Christian. He, I think somebody shot him in his garden, but it wasn't somebody that was looking for him. So they pretty much got away with it. So, we will have to take the drum all and cut this back a little bit, but that's not a big deal because <clears throat> that keel and rudder stem is going to come down through here but the main thing is to get our board up close to where that cut point is going to be we might have to move that pin there but you can see that wasn't too bad and as far as boards sticking up that one can be sanded off. 
Yeah, we can sand that off. We don't need to mess with it. I need to go around with a little nail set and set those ones that are sticking up a little bit, a little deeper. So that's the second one on this morning. Let's get another one. Now I'm gonna measure and trim another board, get it soaking, plug my heater in, get her bent up. We probably got 10 more, maybe more than that. Let's see here. Yeah, down to the neural spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So at least thirteen or fourteen more. Good grief. Okay, we got two, three, four, five boards on yesterday. this looks down here a little high right there but not too bad Problem with the two boards sticking up. But I think that glue is definitely set. Looks like that one cracked, didn't it? Get the next one on and see what happens there. Might have to sand that down, I'm sure. Of course, all these will get cut off. So we're gonna plug in our heater. Start getting ready to heat up another board. I noticed when I ran this last one, it's curving up in this area compared to where it starts at. So I may have to taper this one a little bit. Probably about three or four inches. So we'll get that ready. So you can see that <clears throat> I ran a plank right next to where the keel is going to get mounted. And I'm trying to understand because we got a lot of boards that are going to come in and get tapered. And while I was experimenting with the next board, the rear end doesn't look to be a problem. But in the front, all there is is that piece next to the keel there. And the last support frame is way back here. We got quite a curve on this part where we're coming in to dead end there. So even if I continue on 
with these or continue on with these there's nothing there to mount to where we're spanning across this fairly straight section of the wood it's not too bad but in this curved spot it's really bad so without a place to, to pin it to it creates an issue so I've taken some of the plywood pieces that are left over from the laser cut I've got a whole myriad of shapes that I can pick from and a thicker one than this but I used an outside curve to pick several pieces and then in the grinder ground them to the profile to fit in there and then glued them in there so we got three pieces in there plus a little block underneath that uh, this first one is setting on and a bunch of glue so the object here is to give us some dead wood behind these planks here in the front where they're coming in because we're going to have a lot of them that are going to get uh, tapered and down to almost nothing into this last little spot and nothing to mount to so uh, idea was to give them something to mount to by putting some dead wood in there and gluing it up and that fills the void where see this board's got a taper on the end of it and then we did the same thing back here we tapered it from here all the way up to here because this other board was curving up so trying to get this plane back straight again, it's got a little curve in it, but not near as bad as it was. So that little bit of a taper in there, a taper in and then a taper back out again, made it where this one could be mounted. So <clears throat> as you can see, the back end isn't gonna be a problem coming in and dead end. And uh, most of them are gonna dead end and butt butt end with just a little bend on the end. Put up in the front is where I was worried because I'm starting to have to taper a lot of the boards and when I taper them there isn't much to pin to with just that one piece there so it took a little time to cut and frame the or shape these and glue them in there but it's going to make it easier for me to bring in the rest of these planks because we got a lot of dead wood in the area that was just a big void. You can see how it is on the other side. So we're giving ourselves some more dead wood in there. The other side's gonna be an open uh, view. You can see a few from the keel up spanning that one spot that's open there but the rest is all going to be exposed for the uh, cutaway so <clears throat> we may add a little dead wood there but it's going to have to be something you don't see from the cutaway view so we'll worry about that when we get to it because one problem at a time so I got to let that dry up before I put any more planks on well, we got three on today plus a little fill work done and then something else I got figured out today so I bought a little kit for Dremel that's got some different chucks in it because the chuck that was in the gun would not fit the square shaft that's inside this tube. But the chuck I bought in that little kit has three different chucks, or four different chucks in the kit, and one of them was plenty big enough for that square shaft that drives this thing. So now I've got a little more flexible uh, tool for working. That'll be a little uh, easier to do grinding and sanding with that extension on there. 
And then, uh, of course, we talked about this a little bit. The pin driver. We uh, ordered that from the same company that makes the model, but a different website because their price was not too bad, but they had a almost the same amount just for shipping. So I found this at a different website. I don't think it was Micromark. You know, I got the Micromark catalog here. There is a lot of cool stuff in there. You ought to get one of those catalogs. But anyway, your reference number for this pin 27023. I think that would be the model number or reference number for ordering it. And I, obviously, it's manufactured by Arstensia, and they must distribute it to a bunch of the hobby stores for resale. And we got it from a different hobby store than there. It was actually located on Anastasia's website, but I used that part number to find it somewhere else and buy it and have it shipped free. So if anybody wants to buy one, they do come in handy when you're uh, running these little pins in. So we'll be back on this tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to put the heat to this. We want it to curve. Wait to the end, so it's not going to be an easy bend. Hear that little sizzle. <clears throat> you don't want to break it because we done broke too many. Neighbors mowing the yard, blowing the yard now. Yeah. Try to get some right on the end here. Doesn't take very long, it's just a Gotta get it in the right spot. And if you push too hard, it breaks. That looks pretty good. Need a little more curve up here instead of all the way down.
keep it moist. And down here on the other end, it's not really doing anything except twisting. So that's the easy part. And I was just looking at them. They're a little taper, <clears throat> well not taper, but a 45 cut on the end. And then just going straight back. So we're gonna play that game until we can't. dead wood we put in there yesterday we got something to attach to there so time for some glue now we got her glued up Yeah, that fits in there nicely. I'm gonna put one over here to hold it. I think I missed the hole. I gotta get my get my spectacles on. that now there we go voila so that's really the hardest part of this board <laughs> Looks like it's dying in there nicely to that end. I might add another sliver of wood in there before I do the next board, but that's definitely uh, pretty good. So we just got to make it across here with yeah, I was watching a video last night on YouTube about the bounty and I just broke the drill bit trying to grab these parts. The, the uh, Captain Bly was so anal and he got in an argument 
with Fletcher Christian about coconuts insinuating that somebody had stolen of course Fletcher was in charge of all the sailors and officers or whatever so he's responsible for whatever happens that Captain Bly didn't like and they got in an argument about some missing coconuts which I guess would be part of their rations while they're at sea and because of that argument that's what led to the mutiny on the bounty over coconuts I guess uh, Captain Bly really liked his coconuts or coconut milk or whatever so we broke that drill bit when I tried to grab the pliers it tilted forward and busted that little 0.5 millimeter drill bit it breaks so easily I'm gonna see if I can move this camera up yeah, it looks a little better for you guys, eh? So those of you who watch my channel a lot, be happy to know that I got my con virus vaccine it's one thing I noticed about these pin nailers that thing will pop out of its there's a little tube down in the bottom here that the driving pin rests in sometimes it'll pop out of there you gotta sort of wiggle down see now it went down into that pocket that it's supposed to live in so if you push too hard it'll jump off ahead of the nail and it'll make a pop noise and that's the pin going into the wood beside the head of the nail you got to be sort of very precise with your aiming. There is a lot of slop in there, and that's not that's not good. But what do you get for? I think it was five or six bucks or something for that. But for what we're doing with it, it's just fine. We just gotta. reinsert that driving pin back in its home base it would probably work if you didn't do that but I don't want to trust it and sometimes it's easier to use a hammer other times it's not it just depends this glue off here because we're getting getting to the other end now when I glued this up you can see I got glue on the upper edge of underside edge of that top plank 
and we want to make sure that that glue is up in there this end is already starting to set up so we better get to it these three keep my pins over there on the sandpaper so they don't roll around. One more here. This almost warrants a clamp. don't want to make it where it's in the way of the last hole we want to push up on it so when we go to drill that last hole we're really going to push up on it more let's get that one pin other side here that we're going to put a clamp on that too there we go okay I would do a bunch more planks today, but I've been out shopping. Oh, we went to Home Depot, Walmart, Publix. My wife got her con virus shot today. And go back in a month to get the second one. But at least here in Florida, they're shooting people with the vaccine right and left. The one place we went today is doing 500 a day on their schedule. Of course, you got to call in or get an appointment, but just for one location, 500 a day, we're doing pretty good in Florida. metal ruler 
can get up on their frame board there and get that glue off so the next board doesn't have any thing to keep it from being down on the frame all the way. So, another one is done. And it comes in there pretty nice. I would just go ahead and cut these off with the Dremel, but I need to take that keel piece out of the kit and get it up here and play with the position that it's going to sit in compared to the bottom keel where they come together here and see how much more because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be taking off a little bit off of all these in preparation for that so I'm just gonna let these boards run a little long for now and uh, when we get them all done we'll spend the time with that keel board to get these marked and cut off at the right spot in the front <coughs> We've already done that in the front. There might be a little bit of shaving in this area here, I think. But for the most part, the front is done. So, another board is done. Another week is gone. It's Saturday evening now. We did figure out how to get the right kind of chuck on the Dremel and the, the chuck that was on the Dremel is up here on the end of this extension. But I didn't have the right chuck until I went to Crowder Brothers and found the right one. Is you got to chuck up the end of that square shaft into the end of the gun. So that has to be done first, and then you screw on the, the extension. Now I've used it a couple times, it is a lot more convenient than holding the gun. So not near as much progress as I wanted to make this week, but like always, I'm always doing something else too. And I gotta put some new turbines on the roof. <clears throat> got some new pavers. Extend that area the door's at. Got some more screws, because I'm always building something. Running out of screws. But as far as uh, getting ourselves out of the pickle, it wouldn't hurt to add one there so that the nail line stays consistent, wouldn't it? But we did uh, get ourselves out of the pickle by putting in that dead wood. And it gives us some more beef back there to nail to. For the end of these boards coming in. Yeah, that nail line's gonna go all the way up, so. 
we want to make sure we carry that on but that's going to work out good thanks for watching